Hey you guys, it's Bright tonight. We're here to talk about Colleen Ballinger not being like other girls with her quirky little podcast making a return with her husband. And I also want to touch on Cola Brandt for just a moment with some content that is currently being discussed, even though it's a few months old. I had some thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so we had a little snow day here today, and I've been at home, did a little skincare, obviously, um, you know, working at home for today, and it has just been really nice to be honest. Simultaneously, it's also been a little annoying. I'm just at the age now where I don't really care for snow. I don't care if we get snow days. It makes the roads a mess. It makes the sidewalk slippery. And it's just a little bit more of a task than it is to um, a day to have fun. But my dog absolutely loves it. He has so much fun. So if he's happy, I'm happy. I will deal with the negative impacts of a little snowstorm and I will suck it up and not complain. So that's my rant and the start. Now let's talk about Colleen making her podcast comeback with her husband. We knew this was coming. It's not a surprise. She already announced it. Some of the things that she said in this podcast just confirmed to me that number one, Colleen and Eric are very boring. To listen to their podcast was a task for me. I listened to it at two, two times speed just to hear what they had to say so I can make this video. But if I was not reporting on it, I would not be listening to their boring ass podcast. Just saying. I got a couple of questions over on my Instagram from people saying, hey, have you listened to the new podcast? Did they have sponsors? That was the number one question that I received. I listened to the podcast and I did not hear them say that they were partnering with any sponsors in that podcast episode. Could that change in the future? Absolutely. The only ad that I heard was from Verbo and that was a pre-roll ad before the podcast even started. And to my knowledge, the way that podcasts work, um, you can't say, oh, well, this company should put a pre-roll ad before my podcast starts. It's just kind of like an automated thing. But as far as them saying, hey, this is a break and we're working with this company to tell you about this product, like a lot of other podcasters do, that was not in this specific episode as far as like her comeback goes. Now, honestly, their podcast was not something that I listened to before you know, her being exposed over the summer and everything kind of falling apart for them. Um, because I've always found Colleen to just be very boring. She doesn't make content that I would gravitate towards. Um, and that's just a personal choice. So me listening to this podcast was a little bit of like an outsider's perspective of what do they talk about? Like, what is so entertaining? What's the deal with this podcast? The things that they talked about were so boring. Number one, she goes, and I'll include little clips if I can um, throughout, but the first part is she goes through how she doesn't know anything about cars. She kind of makes it this like thing where she's trying to be quirky about it. And one of my biggest pet peeves is when people act like they're stupid. I've never found that to be funny or cute. I think that it's cringeworthy and just completely unnecessary. Just don't say anything if you're going to come out and act like you're stupid or act like you're dumb. Um, it's not cute. And she goes on this whole little rant about she doesn't know anything about cars. Then she talks about speedometers as if it's this like novel idea that she kind of knows what a speedometer is but she kind of doesn't and it's this whole thing back and forth you none zero to the point Negative. where you can drive this car around a major city like san francisco and i can say like oh what kind of car was it and you have no idea like, i don't know what kind of car we have none with. i and don't know anything about cars it made me think about how like you've always had zero interest in cars mm -hmm. and what they do any type of car it's like 
it's, it's not that like you you don't know or don't care. Like, like what what is it? Like you, I literally do not care about cars even a little bit. Like I don't know different types of cars. Like people when they talk about their dream car, that makes I I have there's I have literally no answer. Genuinely, there's no answer. I can, like even us when we're trying to talk about like what cars to have like as a family or what, what our next car should be like. Right. There's no part of me that understands or knows anything. I'm like I don't know. I want one that fits my kids and is safe. Like I don't and yeah. past that I don't know or care. But um. I truly have no idea what the car was that I drove. And you, when, when I said this, I was telling you a story and I was like, and I drove the car and you're like, what kind of car was it? I said, I don't know. And I kept talking. You were, you couldn't even focus on anything else. You were so shocked by the fact I couldn't, I couldn't tell you the color of the car. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that I pushed a button to turn it on. Oh, like the, to, that's interesting. And that, that narrows, <laughs> narrows and it down. that the uh-huh. like speedometer, is that what those are called? It tells you how fast you're going? Speedometer. Yes. Is this spelled speedometer though? Like Pretty speed? Much, yeah. Anyway, um, that thing was like, the speed. that thing was like, digital ish and that was kind of freaking me out it wasn't like an actual like little stick thingy that was moving oh, it was like digital so you ha- i don't feel like you've paid attention to speedometers for a long time wait for ours lo- doesn't have that does it uh, it does they both do yeah no they do. well it didn't look normal it, ha- it, it has it has the uh the, like the dial old school but like in the middle is like no, the, no, the yeah, digital that. I'm talking- then eric decides to play a game with her about guess the car logo she gets all of them wrong she can't guess a single um emblem correctly and am i saying that that is the absolute worst thing ever um no but i also think that by the time you're in your mid-30s the fact that you don't know any car logo for me it kind of tells me that you don't have any situational awareness and considering that you are not only in charge of your own safety, but you're also in charge of, of the safety of your children was a little bit of a red flag for me. And people can hate me for saying that. I am used to it by now. But to literally not know anything. And she literally said if somebody, um, you know, approached her and they, she had to do like a police report, she wouldn't be able to tell the, the police what the person was wearing or what they looked like. And for me, that is extremely alarming considering that you are a parent in charge of keeping your children safe and you can't remember anything that's going on around you. You don't remember the fact that, you know, your husband has been wearing this jacket for the last year and you say, hey, is it a new jacket? To me, that was uh, telling for a different reason and I didn't find it funny at all. But that was a big section of this podcast. Like, oh, that's, I like your new jacket. Like, I feel like it's something I should be doing, like, and be nice about. I don't know, but I just never noticed. Uh-huh. So I was like, just thinking, I don't know why in that moment we were hanging out and I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, he's wearing a jacket. I bet that's a new so one. I should ask about, I should say. So did you not good. actually like the jacket? No, I did like it. It looked really good on you. But I just never like noticed it before. Yeah. Anyway, then the only reason like this, I, I don't really, I'm, I'm very stressed that I'm going to be caught in some sort of crime situation where I'm a witness and I have to describe a person or a car and I will be, compl- I will be screwed because I can't do it. Like, I won't be able to tell you. I can't tell you. I don't think I know the color of my parents cars I don't think I know the, like my friends cars I don't know anyone I don't know one time recently someone asked me what kind of car we have and I could I didn't know I don't think you do I know I don't I don't know and um the next day a friend drove me somewhere and dropped me off and then afterwards I went out to get back in his car and yeah this was the other story this is why this is my relax you went somewhere with a friend mm-hmm. and then you came out of a store and this person was like I'm in the car in the parking lot yeah and you had to then call them and say I don't know I didn't call because I was embarrassed I just like walked around the parking lot looking for, them for a in person the car. in a car uh-huh. and it was a small car Uh Uh-huh. What do you you mean by small small car? Like not a van or an SUV. Then she goes on to call herself a football expert. She says how now she loves football because her husband loves football and they ended up going to a um, game, you know, and she was standing up and cheering and just really into the experience and then calls football a beautiful thing. Like the whole thing was just very kind of strange to me. I, I get it. Like, okay, you like football. You're kind of like taking on this as an interest because it's something that your husband likes but the the entire rant that she went on was a a little unnecessary and a little bit cringy for me she also talked for a second about how men are taught to suppress their feelings and how they should be allowed to be more vocal about how they're feeling in public. And that's one of the things that she saw at the football game was how vocal people were and how emotional they were. And it brought everybody together. It's shocking to hear me say this. Football can be Something such, Taylor Swift. no, it can be such a beautiful thing. Like it was beautiful. Yeah. Like I was like emotional yeah. leaving the game because to see how much it meant to so how, many people yes, in a group how, and, and like, the camaraderie. Yes, and the, yeah. It was beautiful. Like I genuinely like loved it. Like I was yeah. like, Oh my gosh, all these people from all over the world <laughs> coming together because they're all passionately excited about the same thing. And they have this one thing in common. We're all so different, all different people from all different walks of life, but all these people have a shared passion and excitement over a team that they're all going to root for together and be excited for together and cheer for together and be sad together if they don't win. And like, it was just, and like, 
I don't know. It was just like, I literally, I was brought to almost tears of how much, how beautiful the experience was. Yeah. Men oftentimes are told to suppress their feelings, like generally in our society here in America. And like, there's not many things that men are like, quote unquote, allowed to be excited and passionate and like whatever about, you know, I feel like a lot of times it's muffled because, which I think is stupid. I think anyone of any gender should be allowed to celebrate and love whatever they want to love. But it was like, it just felt like a safe space for like all of these men and women, of course, but it yeah. was majority men like to be excited and scream and be passionate and dramatic and like ridiculous and like dress up in the same costumes. What I want to say about that is how interesting how interesting that now she's all for men saying how they feel and being able to express hurt or happiness or whatever when she, you know, referring back to Joshua David Evans, because that is one of the biggest catastrophes that she had a hand in orchestrating. You know, God forbid if Josh came on, made a YouTube video saying how he was hurt or felt betrayed or felt confused or frustrated, she would have automatically come on with another video and said how much of a victim she is in the situation. She wanted to silence his feelings so much that she was actively involved in making sure that people knew what a big bad guy Joshua, Joshua was behind the scenes. So I don't want to hear from her that, oh, men should be able to express themselves and all of that kind of stuff. I guess as long as they're not um, anyone in Colleen Ballinger's life, then it's okay, right? This woman is such a hypocrite and I realize that that is a word that I know I use quite often, but it, you know, if the shoe fits, I, I'm going to call it for what I think it is. And I think that she is just an ego filled manipulator who wants to play dumb and have people stroke her ego. That is how I feel about Colleen. So this podcast, no, it did not have any actual sponsors that they were working with for this episode, aside from that pre-roll that I heard. Um, but w w nobody is missing anything by her boring podcast um, taking a hiatus for, what, six, seven months. Nobody cares. Colleen is, it's giving, I'm not like other girls, and I cannot stand that, and I can't stand when people act like they're stupid. Makes me cringe. The other thing that I want to talk about in this video before I let you guys go is Cole LeBrant. So Cole's um, got this channel with his oldest daughter, E. And he and E make a whole bunch of super problematic content. And I could do a deep dive just on the problematic content that they've posted. But one of their videos is currently going viral because it's speaking to a specific type of creepy person that hangs out on YouTube. And the video that they posted was E acting as if she is an infant switching places with her baby sister for the day or whatever. He has her in a high chair. He has her eating baby food. He has her being swaddled. And I want to say, this is the type of very specific content of from family vloggers that the worst people that roam around on YouTube seek out. And family vloggers continue to produce it and put it out there and produce it and put it out there. And then you wonder why somebody would call Cole LeBrant a bad dad and call Savannah a bad mom. They have children to create the most appalling type of content around. And they are both absolutely deplorable for what they have done on this platform as well as other platforms with their children. So either way, that's the update on Colleen and her cringy podcast coming back and Cole LeBrant being a bad dad for the, you know, 49th time. I'm sure that that's not going to stop anytime soon, but yeah, more content coming. I am going to do some longer form content in the coming like week or so. I owe y'all a longer video, but I'm just trying to, you know, pace myself and stay sane. So I appreciate it. In the meantime, so for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.